I don't know. I'm just engaging in life more. Yeah. Just, um, I mean, I just, I don't know. I'm more content with my friendships. And it used to be, I have like two or three friends that face talk with me. Mm -hmm. And before, and before the challenge, I would, I was almost intimidated by even the phone time because, or the FaceTime, because it was like intimidating to me. Yeah. You know, and eye contact is uncomfortable when you're that close to somebody. That is true. But after the app thing, I was like, oh, hi, how are you? You know, she talked about in one of the first episodes is just being okay with not doing anything. (laughs) So if you're waiting in the grocery line, instead of being on your phone, um, just be okay not to be on your phone. And I think that was really good and challenging. because I found, I, I did d- definitely decrease the amount of time I was on my phone. My phone tells me how much I spend <laughs> on there. And I think that was a good thing to just be uh, not so focused on the phone all the time. And yeah, just be interacting with real life instead. So yeah, that was a good challenge for that. Definitely, I would encourage other people to do the challenge especially if you're finding it very discouraging to be online. Um, so I, I've been, I don't want to pay for some apps. Um, so I've been on, I've been just casually meeting people either through church or on the Facebook dating app. Um, and so I would, I've definitely, I've been back on there again, but not nearly as much as I was before and not investing the amount of time when people are not investing in you. So um, very, very, very reduced the amount of time that I've been on the computer now. So definitely, um, I definitely think that that was a really good um, way to look at things. It makes you take a step back and actually d- decide what do you what do you want? Like, do you want to continue with uh, trying to meet people online, or do you find it uh, better to try and meet them in person? So it really makes you think about what you what you really want. I love the devotionals or whatever you call them, the, the daily uh, talks, le- lessons she had, the meditations, all that really triggered me to thinking about relationships more. And I really enjoyed that. I really ap- appreciated it. It was what I needed right, right then for that month. So I'm really glad I did it. I'm looking forward to the next one. Um, in this point of my life, I want to I know it sounds like corny, but I just, I want to do things the Christ-centered way. I just want to make sure that I'm doing what is right and is according to Christ in, in the most authentic way I could possibly do it because I feel like it's the only way. And I feel like, you know, people who do things in a lot of different ways, they're kind of like scurrying around the actual answer, which is Jesus. So I feel that I'm just getting right to the root, just doing it his way. <laughs> just let's just get it. Let's just go in. So, yeah, that's how I feel. That's a great insight, actually. I also loved that about it. And that the meditations were Christ-centered and I could feel that they're very clean, like clean energy compared mm-hmm. to other meditations out there, which are like working oh. with other entities. Yeah, like weird. the Christ-centered. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I loved the, especially the one with the many stars, if you did that meditation with the mm-hmm. connection and with the, meeting Christ in meditation and yeah yeah, yeah that, was, that was amazing it was something that I felt as though I needed to do for myself in regards to help me with dating um there's some some issues that I have with dating I'm trying to overcome like shyness is one of them I'm kind of shy so it's like that's one of the challenges that I have and I think this challenge is trying is helping me with overcoming that. I am setting up the 31 day challenge as something that anybody can join at any time. If you want to stay accountable with the way you're using the online opportunities that are out there and all of your digital tech stuff, then this is a great way to keep coming back to it. Keep reminding yourself like, Life is happening out there. I heard someone talking about like the pandemic and how we've lost two years. And that is such a painful story. We wanna be really mindful of the, the thoughts and the stories we tell ourselves about our past. 
When we think about the past two years and we commit to the belief that I have lost that those two years, I'm never going to get them back. That was like a horrible experience. We're always going to be a victim of the pandemic. And that's optional. You may have been a victim in many ways during the pandemic. Maybe you got sick. Maybe you lost somebody. Maybe you lost a lot of finances, whatever. Like there were definitely significant losses during the pandemic and all the lockdowns. And yet, we have a responsibility to tell ourselves a story about our experience that empowers us. That is our job. We have to create that story because by default, our brains are going to come up with this story that makes us feel very victimized and that does not serve us. It serves us in the sense of survival, like you know, our brain is just naturally trying to find ways to avoid ever having to experience that again. Makes sense. But your brain, like, notice the stories it's telling. Notice what you're telling yourself about the pandemic, about where you're at now, and be intentional. And some people will say, but Lily, that's delusional. I can't just make up a story about the past two years. And I'm telling you, you can. Because your story about you being the victim is just as delusional. You're just more committed to it. Be consistent. Set up time when you do your online stuff and say from 10 till 1, I'm going to be online and I'm going to get my work done in that time period. And then I'm going to walk away and take a break. And the most important part of all of this is if you say you're going for a walk at 1 o'clock, at 1.05, you are not still at your desk. You're not trying to squeeze in a few extra little things really quick. You make sure you have wrapped it up and you are done at one o'clock and you are walking away from that laptop or computer or phone or whatever. And you are committed to doing the things that you think are just for fun. Because it's the things that you think are just for fun that don't really matter that make up the parts of your life that you're going to get the most um, like realness, real goodness out of. That's the good stuff.